Hello everyone, welcome back to Talking History. Thank you so much for pressing play today. My name's Liz and if you love all things to do with history and you love delving into the past and just seeing how they lived, then you've come to the right place. Today's video is all about King Ethelstan, the first king of all England. So grab yourselves a drink, get yourselves comfortable as we travel back in time. Ethelstan was born in the year 894 and he was born to Edward the Elder and Egwin and Egwin was possibly Edward's wife or mistress. Not, there's a little bit of debate about that one. Ethelstan also had a younger sister, but she's been left out of the um, Anglo-Saxon Anglo Anglo Chronicles, which I'm not quite sure why. So when Ethelstan was born, his grandfather, Alfred the Great, was the King of Wessex, and he had already repelled many Danish invading armies and he'd um, left a legacy of good governance and the well fortified towns and already had military success. And the young prince was a favourite of Alfred's and Alfred adored his grandson and it was during a coming of age ceremony that Alfred had um, um, wrapped Ethelstan in a scarlet cloak and he had gifted him a sword with precious stones in the, the, the handle bit. I don't know what the handle bit is called. Handle? I, don't, I don't know. Um, after the death or possible disgrace of his mother, Egwin, Edward married um, Ethflat, And this was in around 899, so it had been the same year that Alfred the Great died. As a young lad, only around maybe five, he was sent to live with his aunt, Ethelflad, Lady of Mercia, along with his younger sister. And Edward and Ethelflad had several children of their own, including Alfred, who was now the second eldest son and heir. And this meant Ethelstan was no longer the sole heir. And there's nothing written sometimes i just wish there was a little snippet just something to see whether ethelstan actually had a good relationship with his father or not that just i'd love if just a little snippet um edward died on the 17th of july in 924 and edward had left mercia to ethelstan and wessex to alfred However, just 17 days after the death of Edward the Elder, Alfred mysteriously died on the 2nd of August in 924. And there's been some speculation that Ethelstan had um, ordered Alfred to be murdered. But there's no evidence to suggest this, to even back this up. So I think it's highly unlikely, but I'm, like, I'm, I'm not a historian, I don't know, but there's just, there's nothing to say for the fact that he did. Ethelstan had turned 30 years old when he inherited Mercia and now Wessex. Uh, Ethelstan, Ethelstan has been described as being of middle height, slender build, 
fair haired, handsome in appearance and of graceful manners. Ethelstan was crowned at the um, Kingston upon Thames, which is in southwest London. And Kingston was the traditional um, site of the coronation of Anglo-Saxon kings. And it's thought that seven kings had been coronated at this site, including King Egbert in 838 and King Ethelred in 979. The ancient cuft, cu custom, I cannot speak to, I need to put my teeth back in. Um, for the coronation were for the kings to stand upon the coronation stone, which is basically a, a big rock. And um, the coronation stone now sits in the grounds of the Guild Hall near the um, 12th century Clacton Bridge. Ethelstan had been well educated and he learnt the acts of diplomacy and warfare from Ethelfled. She had him prepared. On the 30th of January in 926, Ethelstan concluded a treaty at Tamworth where he sealed it with the marriage of his younger sister Edith to Cetric, the King of York. And Cetric was probably the son of King Cetric of Dublin, who reigned from 888 till his death in 896. Cetric Jr. and his cousins were expelled from um, Ireland in 902 and he became King of York in 920. Upon the marriage agreement, um, Cetric was made to convert to Christianity and there's no evidence, isn't there always a way, there's just never, never the evidence to suggest how old either Edith or Cetric were, but I think it might be a good assumption to think that Cetric was much older than Edith. And it appeared that soon after the wedding, good old Cetric converted back to his old ways. And Cetric died around a year later. So in 928, Ethelstan had seized the opportunity to take Northumbria. Remember, this is the one that is and Lady of Mercia had just almost at fingertips grasping Northumbria and York just, just before she died. So he seized the opportunity to take Northumbria and he Obviously, he had been met with quite a lot of resistance from the Vikings in York and Northumbria. But once he had conquered the territory and they accepted Ethelstan's overlordship, this actually led to seven years peace. There was all this time, after all those years, there was now peace in the north. Ethelstan's kingdom had now become roughly to the equivalent in size to modern England. There had been conspiracies about Ethelstan's reign right from the very beginning. As I said, there was he was he was he was suspected of having his half brother murdered and this was mainly being led by a member of the anglo-saxon royal household whose name was alfred 
and in 933, Ethel Stan's brother Edwin was accused of being involved with these conspiracies. And despite Edwin's strong protest, Ethel Stan had really strongly suspected that Edwin was involved. So he made the decision that he wanted Edwin gone. He wanted him out of the way. So to spare Ethel Stan the necessity, if it were, of having his brother executed, Edwin was sent to sea in an old leaking boat without a sail or any provisions. And Edwin dreading the prospect of drifting and starving to death, he threw himself into the ocean and drowned. Ethelstan later regretted how he had dealt with the whole situation with his half-brother Edwin and he did penance for his actions and later in his reign he did a lot of good. Ethelstan used diplomacy uh, to maintain his rule over Wales which he had inherited from both his father and his aunt, Ethel fled. Um, he accepted the Welsh kings into his court and he had established an alliance between England and Wales. And although the Welsh kings had to pay um, quite a large tribute to maintain the agreement, and it's believed that this Celtic um, princess in Wales had paid homage to him at um, Bamburgh earlier in his reign, along with Hywel, king of Cornwall, which Ethelstan had succeeded in expelling the Cornish from Exeter, Exeter and established the border with Cornwall as the River Tamar. But Ethelstan's most famous victory of all, what he is so known for, is the Battle of Bumbra. And this battle is thought to be, to have been one of the bloodiest battles of the period. In the year 937, Constantine II of Scotland made an alliance with Owen of Strathclyde. I think that's how you pronounce it. He was the King of Cumbria. And Olaf, <laughs> oh sorry, it's just a big kid of me. I can't help but say that name and think that he likes warm hugs. <laughs> Probably not, but... <laughs> Olaf Guthrinson, King of Dublin, had invaded England. After Ethelstan's victory over the, king, over the Kingdom of York in 928, Constantine was becoming increasingly concerned over his monarchy. After all, Ethelstan had attacked the Vikings in York. What was going to stop him? from continuing north and challenging Celtic territory. Constantine immediately reacted and he began forging links with neighbouring kingdoms. So in order to build links with those kingdoms, the first one he went to was the Norse, known as the Earls of Northumbria, Northumberland, I told you I am having trouble with my words today. The Norse also held power over much of Ireland and were led by Olaf Grathbinson. Grathbinson, yeah. Mm. Who was the king of Dublin. So Constantine married his daughter to Olaf 
Constantine now had the Irish and Northumbrian Norsemen. They were behind him. This big army already was behind him. His links with the Celtic Kingdom was much easier as Owen of Strathclyde, I think I'm pronouncing that right, I'm probably not, but you get the idea, was related to Constantine. I'm not sure how. Could have been cousins. I, I don't know. And he needed very little persuasion. You can just imagine it, can't you? Yo, dude, hey, I'm going to conquer England. I'm going to go over and battle Athelstan. You fancy it? Yeah, I ain't got anything planned. The weekend, I'll just go and grab me battle axe and I'll join in. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know. <laughs> so, Owen had joined the um, strike against Athelstan. Constantine had now built an army and this army began marching south into England. So Ethelstan, who was an experienced warrior and had years of building alliances, was able to bring together the Anglo-Saxon noblemen and armies with relative ease. The two armies met at Bumbra in the summer of 937. Brunnenburg is one of the bloodiest battles ever held on British soil. As written in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles, no slaughter yet was greater made Eve ever in the island of people slain before this same with the edge of the sword. There was also a reference made that five kings and seven earls were killed during the battle. Five kings lay on the field of battle in bloom of youth, pierced with swords. Seven eke of the earls of Amlath and of the ships grew unnumbered crowds. There's not much known about the battle. The only thing that is known is how the Celtic slash Norse army had um, dug themselves into the battlefield with timber fortified trenches. So I can imagine it may have been similar to those of I, I don't know I'm only guessing really that the trenches would have been like what they did in uh, World War one and two with the trenches I can imagine that's the only thing I can think of that's what I see in my head when I when I when I was doing the research so these Fortified trenches, the defences, they were quickly overrun. Brunnenburg's location remains a mystery. Suggestions have included Bridge North in Shropshire, Doncaster in the south, Yorkshire or even Lancaster. Um, to somewhere in Northamptonshire. However, the strongest contender for most historians seems to be the village of Bromborough um, on, on, on the uh, Wirral. Actually, there's a really, really good um, episode of Gone Medieval on the podcast, and it's with um, Michael Livingston, and he talks about the Battle of Bran Bran Brannenburg. If I can figure out how to link it down below, I will try because I'm still learning. But if I can figure it out, I will. But if any of you listen to God Met Gone Medieval on I listen to it through Spotify. And it's a brilliant podcast. 
so and that this episode was really really interesting so it's really worth a listen so wherever the battle of Brandenburg was located the battle remains one of the of great importance in British history since it was Ethelstan's complete utter and crushing defeat of the combined, combined, combined force of the Norse and Celtic armies had confirmed England as an Anglo-Saxon kingdom. So he had forced the Celtic kingdoms to consolidate in the positions that they have occupied to the present day. Away from the battlefields, Ethelstan was also a um, successful in bring, bringing law and order to the land. He introduced currency regulations. He was the first king to print his own image onto the coins wearing a three stalked crown. Ethelstan had settled land disputes, um, gave rights to towns and he held weekly markets. He banned Sunday trading and his central courts developed into virtual national assemblies attended by magnets um, drawn from all over England. Civil laws were updated, especially those concerning the prosecutions of children aged under 15. Ethelstan had also established a formal organisation for Masons, which brought about a Freemasonry in England. Ethelstan had also made many political alliances through arranging the marriages of his many sisters. Remember, he had eight of them, apart from one who actually went into a nunnery, I think. So, the first was obviously Cedric, King of York. He had another sister married to Otto I, the Holy Roman Emperor. Another sister, Edgifu, is that how you pronounce it? Probably not, but like I said, I'm crap at pronouncing words, I can't help it. <laughs> um, he, she actually became Queen of France through her marriage to Charles the Simple. Another sister was married to the Viking Eagle Scala Grimson. Scala Grimson. Scala? 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 I don't know. I think. What, yeah, you get the idea. I'm rubbish at this thing. I want the Tudors. <laughs> and another sister was married to Alan II of Brittany. Ethelstan's court had attracted scholars from. Ireland, Germany, France, Italy. It was a multi culture and it's, it's just amazing. I love it. Ethelstan was charitable. I think he done all that good as his penance over his actions, over his half brother Edwin. He was charitable, he was popular, he made provisions for his poorer subjects, he directed that each manor owned by the crown should be charged annually, which would be used to relieve the poor and the destitute. Ethelstan reigned for 16 years. He never married never had any children. Ethelstan died on the 27th of October 
in 940, aged 44. And he died at Gloucester. And he chose to be buried at Malmesbury Abbey, which was a favourite of his. This was in Wiltshire. Ethelstan was buried close to his cousins who had died at the Battle of Brandenburg. And he chose this over his family's mausoleum in Winchester. Ethelstan's body was sadly lost during the Reformation, but his tomb, it still survives. William of Malmesbury wrote of Ethelstan around 200 years later. And he wrote, the firm opinion is still current among the English that no one more just or learned administered the state. Ethelstan was the first King of Wessex to bring together all the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms in England. Ethelstan would be succeeded by his half-brother Edmund. Thank you so, so much for watching today and for putting up with my rubbish pronunciations. I'm afraid they're not going to get any better. Sorry. <laughs> I really hope you enjoy the videos. Please leave some comments in the comment selection down below and give it a big thumbs up. And please do think of subscribing because I am going to be here every single week with a different video. And if you have any suggestions, please jot some down. I'll be interested in them. I right, look after yourselves. Be good. I'll see you all next week.